Welcome to the Great Lake Gaming Podcast. My name is Nicholas Cartier, and it is July 1st, and I'm here today with Dan Allen. Pull my devil trigger. Hard motherfucker. So. And Kyle Melville. <coughs> and today we are so going bad. to discuss the Ubisoft and the Nintendo E3 presentations. But first, this is a segment that Dan Allen likes to call Swamp Thing and his thoughts. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess. But she had an enchantment upon her, of a fearful sort, which could only be broken by love's first kiss. She was locked away in a castle guarded by a terrible fire-breathing dragon. Many brave knights had attempted to free her from this dreadful prison, but none prevailed. She waited in the dragon's keep, in the highest room of the tallest tower, for her true love, and true love's first kiss. Ha! <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. What a load of... No, you. that was Swamp Thing in the plots. I hate you, Coach. All that build-up. How you guys doing today? How'd you guys like that? Uh, not so good after Smash Mouth. <laughs> Tree, <laughs> I didn't know we were allowed to do that in your house. I would have already done that. What, Smash Mouth? That exact bit. I didn't know we were allowed to do Shrek in there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was allowed. I've been, I've been waiting the host one to pull that one out. <laughs> I get it, because Shrek lives in the swamp. He's a swamp He just wants a swamp back. And he's trying to rescue a princess in the tallest, tallest tower. <laughs> so true. Alright. Anyways. It's so, brand. It's brand. Anyways. We're going to fucking dive in. So. Dive in. Today, we're going to be talking about Ubisoft, and we're going to be talking about Nintendo. But, I want to give I want to give Ubisoft some time to shine, so this isn't just a Nintendo show. So, we're going to spend a little time as we... UB. Yeah, no, we're gonna go through Ubisoft. So Soft, like Cartier. Yeah. So Ubisoft, it started off with a ridiculously appropriate Just Dance nineteen performance. Mm. St- Car- did you you Car- Nicholas Cartier did not like this performance. <laughs> Spoke out about it. It was I I do not approve of any musical performance at E three, but I think Ubisoft <laughs> brought two of the best first off. They, without a doubt, brought the best one when they had Kirk Hope on there, doing, like, the Mario and Rabbids, like, Donkey Kong, like... We're gonna talk about it. Yeah. But, uh, no, they do Just Dance every year. I don't know why this one would turn you off. Is it the panda? The panda wearing the marching band? It's just that, like, I'd rather hear about the games than, like... Yeah. Watch, wait, wait for, wait for people to just, like, switch theaters, but that's not them. You said, you still trying to put on a show... And if that involves backflipping pandas, it's, it's always going to involve back, backflipping pandas. It's like, Just Dance has had the same aesthetic forever, too, I feel. Yeah. Like, it's not like they have a new theme each year. It's like, new dance. I like it, though. It's a good opener. So you're going to play it? No, no, no. But, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like uh, my thoughts on Fallout. Like, I'm not going to play that, but like I could definitely speak to how it affected the press conference. I think it was a good. It was a good opener. Yeah, they don't have Aisha Tyler anymore, so. No, they don't. That's sad. Yeah. But after that performance, they went on and they started showcasing Beyond Good and Evil Two. Mm. And what was it? Um. Who was she? The art director, and then one of the like co-directors came on to the stage, and they talked about their space opera, is what they called it. Yeah, space opera. Yeah. That's what they call it. Yeah, interesting. Space balls. Um, what they did say is that it is going to be a prequel to Beyond Good and Evil. Mm. They said that Jade from the first game is going to show up and she's going to play like an integral part. She might be the villain, but... Yeah, the Jade reveal at the very end. We saw Jade and Paige. Like, that. the cook was apparently from the first Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, I, I never don't... played Beyond Good I never played it either. I've been thinking heavily about it recently. <laughs> <laughs> about playing it? Yeah, yes, yes, about playing it. I almost just want to wait for the second one, because yeah. I don't know if I can do a PS2 graphics. <laughs> I, I, just, I know I can. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can, I cannot. Yeah. One of the one of the things that they talked about at that, um, like, the beginning of, like, that conference, they had uh, Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt come out. Dude, whoa, I forgot about this. Yeah, yeah, no, they had him come out, and they have this program where they want people to put, like, their artwork and, like, their music and stuff, like, into this game. Mm-hmm. 
to like incorporate like that into the game to me. They're pretty much like reaching out to community for like Loki help. The, really? To, to make all the lore for like the planets, man. So that way when you land on one of these like four to nine planets. You guys should make a song for that. You, right. Send it in. That'd be and, so sweet. Rough Sailor? How it is, how it is yeah. we would never send in a song and, like, that song would be on the radio. It's, like, how the website works is a, it's all about collaboration. So it's, like, you would upload, like, a beat, or you could upload a whole song, and then people are going to, like, change that, and then someone else is going to change that, and then that's going to be in the game. Same with, like, pictures. If you want to do something, and then someone's, like, graffiti over it. When you land on a planet and you see a billboard or, like, a, an ad or you're hearing something on the radio, like, the fact that, and it's a good idea, like, use your fans to help fill out a lot of this content, especially, like, the radio. You think, like, how much of a nightmare this place is. <coughs> oh, my God, this going to be like, a radio so station. cool. Put the podcast on one. there. <laughs> <laughs> Meta. Yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt came out, and then all the times people didn't say poop during E3, he had my favorite shit. He was just like, he ended it, he was like, uh, go do that shit. And I'm like, yes, go do that shit. What a good idea this is. The Space Monkey Program mm-hmm. is the name of the uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 thing, but I don't know if that's the name of... Remember the name of the Joseph Gordon-Levitt thing? No. Look into it, though. It looks very good. Yeah. He, uh, immediately after that, he went on Twitter, and he said that the people who contribute will be, like, compensated somehow, whether it be, like, in the credits or some other way, but he did go on there and, like... Because I guess people on the internet were just like, they're trying to take our ride, you know. Trying <laughs> <laughs> to take our goddamn, goddamn Josh Gordon. Trying to it. take our right dance. Goddamn, <laughs> goddamn paper boy. <laughs> trying to take it. Like, <laughs> trying to take our funky beats. Dude, <laughs> it's it's good. The woman that was on stage, she it was actually when they revealed Beyond Good and Evil, it was her and the the main guy. I think she's one of the main two. I was surprised not to see the other guy, but like. There's a lot of heart in that team, man. I don't know if it's because they're, like, sweetly foreign. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is, but, like, Ubisoft is doing a bad job of, like, not cutting mics, Trey. You know what I mean? Like, people are leaving the stage, you can hear, still hear them, like, grumbling. And, uh, when, like, they walk out, and they actually, like, have started the next trailer. They just haven't fully cut to it yet. And you, you, have, you hear her be like, um, we did it. I'm like, <laughs> this team. They just feel good. They put out a lot of dev diaries, like, yeah. kind of like Ninja Theory. They're like... They showed a lot of gameplay, and it's like it's like mm-hmm. alpha gameplay, but like they showed a lot. And the trailer wasn't even gameplay; they showed it afterwards. But that trailer, have you seen that, Kyle? Because I know you were a big fan yeah. of the first. Well, we watched it like two times on the podcast yeah. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not podcast. yesterday, but um, last week. Oh, okay. Did we? Yeah, he was going through the trailers. Oh and stuff. yeah, nice, nice. It was the one with the pig. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I know. Which one yeah, it yeah. Is. No, yeah, I've never played one. And I really want to play one because of two, but I just can't deal with the graphics of one because two looks so fucking cool. That's, do you think? Fair. Do you think two will look that good when we play it? Oh God, yeah. All right, but I do. Listen, I love Ubisoft, but uh, what's the name of that damn game? I know. Oh, they not have, they, have, not they have a, a watch record watch of just like you know. Dude, I, I think it'll look it, good. It's, it's just a... Shit. Well, I know a lot of people, like, you know, obviously the, it probably wasn't in-game engine that's like people are using, yeah. like, crazy expensive, like, rendering software to, like, make some of these trailers. Right. And I don't even think it's, like, a vertical slice of the game. I just feel like, um... What am I trying to say? I don't know. Yeah, the Watchdog thing is, like, stuck in my head. Like, how amazing that, that gameplay demo looked at yeah. E3. And that was even, like, not masqueraded, but I was even like, this is gameplay. Yeah. And just like, it was never going to run like that. Like, the car crash you cause, I don't know if you've ever seen them side by side, like the demo and then gameplay. And yeah, things are going to change before. But they it's don't. Like, They're not. Like, sometimes Ubisoft, it changes so much where when you line all these different games that have done it from Ubisoft up, you could say, pretty, you're pretty misleading Ubisoft at E3. You're, yeah. Like, of all the people, like... Of all the bad things I said about Bethesda, they're not like, it's going to look like this. They're yeah. like, we're not going to show you what it looks like yet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is better, I think, than like, it's yeah. going to look like this. Fuck you, no, it's not. Uh, but, uh, but you played yeah. Watch Dogs. I know it was probably still a great game. I still think Watch Dogs is great. Mm-hmm. Watch Dogs too. Better than sure. Sleeping Dogs? Oh, yes. Sorry. Better than Sleeping Dogs. Dang. Sleeping Dogs is a good game, but yes, yeah, better than Sleeping Dogs. I like Watch Dogs. Yeah, Thinking Watch Dogs is Watch Dogs Two. That's something you should grab for your PS4, dude. It's <sighs> so many things I should be grabbing. Yeah, it's just way over God of War. Yes, 
whoa, you recommend Watch Dogs 2? You're drunk. No. You just know I've already like, said like, no to Watch that Dogs. Is, yes, exactly. <laughs> I feel like Watch Dogs would be more entertaining to you than God of War. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I'll play both of them, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so from there. Um, it ended up going to Trials Rising. Kyle, do you remember playing Trials? Yeah, but, Trials uh, yeah, yeah. The motorcycle, yeah, I have that. Yeah, yeah, shit, I check them out with anyone. Really? Yep. You guys definitely played Fusion, too. Mm-hmm. I've been replaying Fusion. I definitely saw you yeah, and Arden play Fusion, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was free uh, a month or two Not ago. Not too long ago. PlayStation yeah. Plus. Yeah. When, uh, when this game comes out, are you going to play it? Uh, too many other big games. I don't know if I really waste it. The only reason I even bought that one was because of fucking Artem. <laughs> That's fair. Trial's always cheap, though. It's always it good always for the cheap. price, yeah. Like, the most it usually is, like, what, fourteen ninety nine or something like that? Mm-hmm. Cartier, I'm sorry, not to double back and ask you a question, but am I supposed to believe Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to be on <laughs> the PS4? <laughs> That's so funny. Maybe they said it's coming out in October. Didn't they? <laughs> oh, no, I don't, I don't think so, dude. I don't think there's a date for Beyond Good and Evil 2, is there? No. No, it's to be announced. Okay. Trey, am I supposed to believe it's going to be on PS4 and not PS5? No, it's uh, going to be on PS4. I'm hoping. I mean, everybody already has a PS4, so releasing on a PS5 sounds kind of stupid. Well, there's a lot of games that are announced for the next-gen system. Right. Right. I, but I, I'm just not so sure it's coming out, like... I mean, but just because it's announced for the next gen system doesn't mean they won't make it for the PS4. Right, crossover. Right. I feel like Death Stranding is going to end up being. All the, I think all these games are going to be on PS4 as well as PS5. Mm-hmm. Well, Cyberpunk. I look at Cyberpunk and that they they're saying PS4, so I'm taking their word for it. But if they hadn't said that, I'm like, I don't think it's on the PS4. I don't even want to talk about the PS5. I'm sad that I was the one to bring it up, but. You're gonna get it. But Beyond Good New looks really good. If it's going to look that good, I don't know. The game's ready. I don't know. I'm definitely playing Trials, Cartier. Just maybe not immediately. Oh, yeah? I like Trials. Maybe it's something we go half on and then we'll just play it, stream it. Yeah, dude. Stream what? the whole thing. When I think about people developing video games, I'm like, Trials, Trials, guys, I'm glad you fucking, you Still made your money. make fucking video I'm games. glad you made dude, your fucking money. they started from what? Mi- uh, mini clip or mini something? Mini clip, yeah. Sure, from fucking nothing. Yeah. So good. Mini clip. It's a good story. Remember it was just the arrows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember all the clones? Yeah. Like during the era, it was actively like yeah, only on PC. It was trying to be like that, like ones. the the truck, and then like I remember the one that looks like you you just drawing like a, yeah, like a yeah. stick figure. I actually love that one. Yeah. <laughs> so after trials, they ended up talking about the division two. Yep. And they gave a little uh, they gave a little insight about what it's going to be. So America's in a civil war, and it takes place seven months after the viral outbreak. Some of the new features that they said were going to be in there are eight-player raids. Mm. They said that there's going to be three episodic DLC packs. And I have one question for you, Kyle. Mm. They burnt you. I can see it on your arm. They burnt you. <laughs> are you going to give this game a chance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, nice. That's interesting, because I think like, <coughs> a lot of people, like, uh... The thing is, is that, like... Weren't there for when it was, like, yeah, me we're making ben, it right. Yeah, me so and Benny said we're going to play it together now. The thing that we both agreed on is that it's not really fun when you're done with the game, when you're done with the story, and if you don't have anybody to play with. Yeah, you know, it's just... Mm-hmm. You know, and they hyped it up so much. Remember all the commercials on TV? Like, how you can use your tablet. You can use your tablet with it. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Buy a tablet. I downloaded a tablet the, for the free. thing on my phone and it it sucked. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> I'm sure it might have worked better on a tablet. <laughs> on a tablet. On a tablet. No splinter. Know, as long as they don't hype it up, Division like, two. like just pound it in your head. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much down with that. Eight player raids. That sounds really cool. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you can just like. Match make. Mm-hmm. Because God knows I don't know fucking eight people with PlayStations. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe four. Uh, Trey, what do you think about the Division 2? You think you'll give it a chance? Oh, not a chance in hell. Hmm. Not a fucking cold chance in hell. 
Did you play one? No, but I've watched enough videos and heard enough about it. I'm just not interested in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't blame you. So, from The Division 2, they uh, they went on to another musical performance, and it was for the Donkey Kong DLC for Mario <laughs> Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Best music of all of E3 cartoon. <laughs> not even a joke. Uh, they were... And correct me in the corrections if I'm wrong, anyone that's listening and cares about corrections. But... <laughs> <laughs> there were times when he was transitioning between... Donkey Kong songs he had written and like Mario and Rabbids songs oh, yeah, I think he wrote a few for the actual Mario and Rabbids and all that music's great uh, where he was hitting like notes specifically from like, Donkey Kong games where he didn't even make the fucking music like he did Kirk Hope did not do the music on Donkey Kong Country SNES and he definitely like that theme which yes is in other things uh, is like from that game and he hits it as a transition Right in the fucking heart. It was so good. I'm, I love Grant Kirkhope. I'm a fan. So good. Yeah. Did a good job on ukulele too. As far as recent Kirkhope works. Mm -hmm. Keep giving Grant Kirkhope your money to put music in games. Everyone, thank you. I appreciate it. That has been a PSA. PSA. So after that, they talked about a game called Skull and Bones. Wait, how'd you like that musical performance, right here? It's pretty alright. I like I liked it better than the Just Dance one. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Just Dance. Because at least it was hyping up DLC. Yeah. Yeah, at least it was there for. We already knew about it, but like, yeah, served yeah. more purpose than. I guess maybe I just think? like Donkey Kong music better than like Just Dance. Mm -hmm. Just, just dance like in general, like the kids bop of video games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wrong. Fuck. Fortnite is the kids' bop of video games. Oh my god, you're not wrong. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> my buddy D'Angelo yesterday was like, "Yeah, man, but Fortnite was like, was like targeted at kids." And I thought so hard for a second. I'm like, no. "I think you, no, I think you're right. I never thought about that, but I don't know." Yeah, no. Fortnite's not from Ubisoft. Fuck. That's right, Cartier. But they uh, they talked about this game called Skull and Bones, and from the looks of it, it looks like Ubisoft's like Sea of Thieves. It looks a little less cartoony to Good. me. I, I, like, I heavily looked in the Sea of Thieves, and then I'm like, man, this reminds me of Veggie Tales. <laughs> <laughs> the pirate Veggie Tales. And I'm just like, I don't know if I can play this. So, I hear it's great, but, like, God, games turn me off when they're too cartoony. Mm. It doesn't seem like it's trying to be fucking serious, no matter how good the game is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Have, have you, uh, did you like Black Flag, man? Assassin's Creed Black Flag? I did. So, just so you know, I would describe Skull and Bones as a little less cartoony than Sea of Thieves, but also, it is kind of like, it goes full bore the other way of Sea of Thieves. How it's different is, you're never going to be a single player, like, boarding another ship. It's going to go cutscene, and what it's about is ship battles. And it's the team that did Assassin's Creed four black flag mm. uh, and it's pretty much Ubisoft being like what if you made a game just on this battle system right. skull and bones is pretty much the perfected black flag battle system I don't know if that makes you more or less interested I just know you're an Assassin's like Creed guy the fucking Most people shit did. battles in Assassin's yeah, Creed no, I know a lot of people happen. that didn't finish the storyline they just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, like a lot of people have told me that. That's that's what makes that game like, my favorite one. They had like four of the like the major ships that you had to take down. Mm. The big, I, the, oh, the, yeah, the legendary. The, the, yeah, the legendary yeah, ships. Yeah. yeah, I remember I only got two of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, go they back were and hard, play man. They yeah, go back really and play hard. it. I don't have a 360 anymore. Don't tell them to go back three Assassin's Creed. <laughs> 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 I barely wanted to play the last one. <laughs> And the next one, like, looks... looks I, the good. one that I... The Wait. one where they were in London, the guy and the girl. Okay. That one was, like, my... My favorite recent one. Mm -hmm. Was that Unity? Hmm. Unity. Unity. Maybe, I don't know if maybe. it's Unity. I don't know. Maybe one after Unity. Okay. I remember playing Unity. It might be Unity. Revelations. Not sure. Revelations. 
Was uh, it? Yes. Okay, I think it's one after Unity. I don't yes, know. Yes, it's Revelations. But I think I think uh, Stolen Bones is. I think it looks pretty cool. I lo- I didn't know that it was based on like the gameplay for like Black Flag and like yeah. So that that gets me more hyped for a game that I'm never gonna play. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, it, it should. Yeah, yeah. It's a, is this for PlayStation too. It's proven. Yeah, definitely. No, this cool. is coming for PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. You get on the Switch. Right. And I say, and I know I'll see at these Xbox exclusive. Right? You're right. Yeah. yeah. Exclusive pirates. Exclusive. You can get a bundle. You can get that Xbox One. Xbox One X. Yeah, best. Oh. So, things might change dramatically, guys. Are you buying that car? No. <laughs> no. What's but that? Xbox One X. Is Nick getting married? No, Nick is moving out tomorrow. Whoa. That is fast. So, <laughs> he was supposed to be moving out today, <laughs> and I guess he's That's not. He's moving out tomorrow. Okay. So, an Xbox might happen sooner than later. Oh. <laughs> Uh, fucking game changer. Fuck your shit up, I'm, but you never know. I'm paying more for rent now. I might buy an Xbox. <laughs> 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 so you just told me. Yeah, no, cool. I'm excited. Dude. I was. I mean, I'm gonna be paying what I was. Yeah. Supposed to be paying. Co <laughs> op cup head. Yeah. Let's go. So, yeah. Dude. Buckle up. So, so yeah. So Trey. What up? Do you know what the next game is? Um. Uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 6. Got Cal, him. Cal Melville, do you know what the next game is? Lover 2, Escape from Dan Washington Allen. Bay. Do you know what the next game is? Fuck you, man. It's just the trailer, trailer of, of the week. It makes me weak. That's not a game. It is. We're, we're watching the trailer of the week. It's this game. Transference. It's on the screen. But it's... If it was right in front of you, Elijah Wood would step on the stage. Kyle, I'm excited because me and you watched. Uh, it's Conan. <laughs> me and you watched uh, last year's. I remember us watching yeah. the transfer and some. So this is uh, we're gonna watch. It's a three minute and forty six second video, but Whoa. it's Transference E three conference presentation by Ubisoft, and pretty much like just just check it out on YouTube if you want to. The return of Trader of the Week clicked here. I know. You can find this in the you Ubisoft. Have the sound on me? Yep. Well, I'm, I got it. Oh, nice. Ubisoft North America YouTube page. That's a cool, like, stage. Yep. The show's in my room. The showmanship's high for Ubisoft. Insert Elijah Wood. (laughs) You know what's cool is, like... That's what I can always keep telling people that when they say they're. Uh, well, we'll talk afterwards. Oh, okay. Though we're known for our film content, we're also avid gamers, and the opportunity to those beautiful eyes. Was something we had. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Benoit Shi, game director on Transference. Oh my God! Try not to make the joke, Dan. Together, we combine the storytelling techniques of film with interactivity His name's of Benoit. video games, enabling us to create this unique, deeply immersive world with a dark and unsettling narrative. Have you ever dreamed of entering someone else's consciousness, exploring their darkest thoughts and most intimate secrets? Oh. In Transference, <laughs> and with Transference, we're you bringing... You weirdo. <laughs> transference, we're bringing a first person... Like, that he messes up with his teleprompter, he's like, no. <laughs> Get all weird after Will Dude, right? What the fuck? <laughs> Trey, if you're going to do VR mind fuckery with me, guess what? The likeness of Elijah Wood is a strong tool to have, because it's in all our fucking brains. <laughs> I'm just saying. In VR and on traditional platforms, you fucking love Lord of the Rings. welcome you to uncover the secrets hiding in this mind-bending psychological thriller uh, that will yeah. leave you <laughs> long after you put down the That's control. That's right, going to be This be Frodo. is Transference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's your mom. You're going to sit here real soon. Just hold still. No. People keep saying that. This is lies. Sounds like it. It's definitely not. But it sounded like it. Okay, I agree. <laughs> Glad it's not dragged by it for the record. You know, this rig's a bit cumbersome, but that's always the way with these new prototypes, huh? It still sounds like them. Why? And all you have to do uh, is just 
He looks more like Kevin Smith. Just be. That's true. Looks like Jack Black and Kevin Smith. Looks like Guillermo del Toro and Kevin Smith. Fucking. He looks like the Too Many Cooks killer. He looks like a lot of motherfuckers. Looks like the guy from Jaws, chubbier. He looks like the animated guy from Toy Story, the bad one. Is gonna change. Stole the dog. We're all gonna be together. All of our hard work. Reverse the process. All of our sacrifices. That's my gift to you. Us. Help me! Help me! Oh yeah, this is a VR game, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for this one. This game is VR, but it's also like playable on screen, so you can play it on Xbox One, you can play it on PlayStation 4, or you can play it on PC. That's sweet. Totally get it for VR. The first one. For VR? Escape a corrupted mind! Transference. So good. Looking interesting. One thing they didn't show in this one, but they showed in the last one, is like, just like little clips of hinting at like the beginning of research into VR. Mm -hmm. Just like, if if they're trying to fuck with my brain, another thing to do is for me to be sweating with a VR helmet on and show me someone else sweating with a VR helmet on. Dude, for real. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think that's, that's something really great with the VR. It's looking weird. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally not. Oh, yeah, like it's I was going to say it before, is like, I like how actors are like in video games and a lot of people like give that a lot of flack. I'm fine with it. I'm so fine with it. Yeah. I mean, if you can't get into a movie, dude. <laughs> I'm not saying if you can't. I mean, Elijah Wood can fucking probably play yeah, pretty man. much anything. So it, it's nuts because like the, your horizon. the company, I am not sure what the company that like he's working with or like the one that he helped make is, but like they usually like work on films and stuff and like this is their way of making like an interactive movie. Yeah. Kinda, I like it. Are you going to play this game in VR? I'm going to play this game in VR. Hell yeah. Mm. That, is, that, that question is the whole reason I played this trailer. I'm honestly not going <laughs> to lie. There's a lot of shit I'm about to probably start playing because I'm going to have my living room back. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I'm, uh, I've am i been wanting to get back into the VR. It's just like a hassle. i got like a drunk kid running around. Is Tetris Effect out yet? I don't think so, but Tetris is one thing I really We're playing like. Tetris Effect. We're going to live stream that VR Tetris Effect. Mm -hmm. Confirmed. Forced. Oh, yeah. Down. Weird Tetris happening. Oh, I know. We already discussed it. I was just letting everybody else know. I know if we <laughs> talked about this with everybody. <laughs> Tetris. VR. All right, so after they talked about uh, transference, they... Does anyone care about For Honor? No. Oh, I, I want to say... Good job for I thought it, I thought uh, For Honor was cool, but the fact that it was just like a battle game <laughs> kind of annoyed me. It'd be way cooler if they had like a story. Well, you know, it's a it's getting a new game mode called Breach, and it's gonna be on its um Marching Fire expansion. Pretty much, it's like four v four PvP, and they use the word ambitious with this next update. I'm glad. Uh, when I heard, like, people's response to this game, it was definitely that, like, for something that hinged so much on PvP, the fact that there weren't, like, immediately dedicated servers was, like, a great hindrance to it. Yeah. Probably more so than, like, Friday the 13th, the case of Friday the 13th last year, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What happened with that? What's up? What happened with that? They didn't have, ded so they didn't have their own dedicated servers, because everyone didn't have that Bethesda money. You know what I mean, Trey? <laughs> but seriously, yeah. they got a lot of money. Uh... <laughs> so, there's a lot of, like, people dropping matches and just, like... Because that's, you know, only an online game, Friday the 13th, with, uh... You know, you know what game I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of rough, uh, like, matchmaking, connection issues, which is everyone blamed on. They're not being dedicated servers for Friday the 13th. Uh, to the point where Ferran is so aware of the problem, I think they already fixed it, but they definitely, when they were talking about upcoming expansion... The Chinese warriors or whatever. They're like, with dedicated servers. I'm like, I thought you already fixed that. Yeah. Like, we just want to let you know one more time. We got those dedicated servers. I'm like, good. Because, I mean, it's interesting. I think it's a game you got to be good at, too. That's definitely like, get good at For Honor. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, never will. Mm -hmm. Get no. good. Okay. No. I was a fan. 
wasn't yeah. Out, yeah no like Ben's like the only concept. one that I've heard like talk about it that's why I'm like does anyone really... does he talk highly of it he, no, talk, like he it. talks about it I like the concept I think it's good enough for, uh, it's weird I mean it's first weirdly first enough, enough it was good enough of a game for Ben to buy Ben does not buy every game mm-hmm. yeah so like that was a weird game for me to see him buy yeah for not sure not gonna lie no, it didn't seem like a Benny choice <laughs> It's Ben! Right. You know? Yeah. It does not seem like a game Ben would play, but, I mean, honestly, if Ben played it, I have a little bit of faith in it. That's fair. Because, like, he, I, I haven't heard him, like, critical. saying anything bad about it, but, like, he, he has talked about it a little bit, and, yeah. like, he's one of those people who, like, he'll play a game, and then he'll turn that game in, like, a week later, because he has a beat, and he'll get another game, but, like, yeah, he, he, spent, he spent some time on that game. fuck out of shit, you know, so, like... That's why I'm like, wow, you really play that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He'll be on next week's gauntlet. Wah, wah. <laughs> I wish I knew where he got the fucking time to beat those games as hard as he does. I mean... What, man? Don't sleep. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he's doing. He's right, not man. sleeping. Don't fucking sleep. Does he show up to work every day, or does he like not show up sometimes? Yeah. Let's not talk about it. No, he's usually at work. <laughs> every so, day. anyways, they uh, right they now. went from that game to eh, I don't know if they technically went to that game, but we're going to talk about the new Assassin's Creed game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Super Mario. Odyssey. So they said that this game is going to take place hundreds of years before Assassin's Creed Origins, even though Origins <laughs> was supposed to be the first game. So that's a that's a selling point that they're using again in the first game. <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, can I pitch um can I pitch a fan theory I heard to you about Odyssey? So, so I don't know if you got this deep because I don't think there's a lot of this sprinkled into Origins. I've been told there's one major thing you learn in regards to the fact that so Origins is supposed to be about the backstory of the assassins, right. the history, like the origins of the assassins. What if Odyssey is the origins of the Templar. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And maybe the Templar didn't necessarily start out as, you know... Bad. Uh, yeah. Like, what is like, twisted intentions kind of situation. Like, right, right. what if they're just, like, good guys? <laughs> or whatever. But what if it's the origins of the Templar? I thought that might be yeah. interesting. Confirm you're not Odysseus. Yeah. So, uh, some, of, some of the things about this game is that you can play as a male or a female in this game... And they said that the story changes based on your decisions. Kyle, how does that make you feel that an Assassin's Creed game lets you change how the game is going to play out based on your decisions? That is stupid. It's odd. It's odd. Cause because they're... Assassin's Creed originally is the playback of somebody's DNA and what actually happened back then. So Ooh. if it changes based on your decisions, then you're then changing history. Hot take. You know, in all the games, you always have an option at the top in every mission to do exactly what that person did at that time and mm-hmm. you get extra points for it. Nice. So if you're going to go ahead and make your own decisions in this game, then what is Do you think in this game you're going to be playing like as that? Well, maybe you're just maybe, like, maybe you're just maybe playing you're not... the game and you're not playing back. Was the, the animus game. in Origins? Uh yeah, the animus was in Origins. I was unsure. Yeah. I'm like maybe there's no animus. It just it's it seems no. It's this chick in like a a weird cave in like Egypt or something. Whoa. Man. Yeah, where uh, I guess she plugged into their their tombs into like their dead bodies, and then like the animus had like plugged into that and all that kind of crap. It seems uh, it seems a little odd that they're um, they're going away from like one of those like core values that they've had from the game, but like maybe it's I see I see a lot know. of games doing that where like your decisions like. Yeah, but this game isn't, shouldn't be like that. This game is not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to play it how it has already been played. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, but you're tired of just climbing shit, Kyle. I am tired of it. Tired of a lot of. They're trying to adapt. They're trying to keep you. They're They're trying to show you damage numbers. Switch it up for you. They want to show you those damage numbers. Dude, I might go back and play Assassin's Creed don't, when I actually get don't. shit, but, like... No, because I have them, and, like, yeah. I've already... And Origins is going to be cheap by the time I'm, I go back and play the the one before that that I never finished, yeah. with the guy and the girl. <laughs> you know? Oh, I don't know, man. It's starting to get, like, a giant clusterfuck. 
I never knew those games were going to last this long. I thought it was going to be like Assassin's Creed 1, 2, and 3. And Me like, too. Yeah. That's about Holy it. Holy shit. Like now it's just <laughs> Every like, year. Bye yearly. Yeah, they're they're going to re- release uh, uh, release Assassin's Creed every two years now instead of every year. A but year. I thought that too, man. But I guess maybe they were developing this alongside. But this is back-to-back years. Interesting. Yeah. But, you know, Ubisoft's big. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal for them. That's yeah. a pretty good one trick pony. <laughs> People still get kind into buying it. It's true. Yeah. Dude, worse, I mean, it, it, is, a, it is a good game. I mean, con- honestly, every game you buy is like a continuous of the last one, or par- in part, you know? Yeah. So I guess that's why people keep reading the sequel of a book. I get it. But I'm just kind of bored with the gameplay. I need something different. I can't keep playing the same thing every year. And then they switch it up with like. They switch it the up last like... battle system, but it just it's just not enough. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think I'm starting to lean towards more like faster paced games. And Assassin's Creed is like it's almost like a detective game. Honestly, you're almost pretty mu- you're pretty much fucking Batman. You're saying you're ready to pull my double trigger? You're saying Devil May Cry Five? Yeah. Is a is a Kyle buy? Yeah. Like I yeah. need a I, I need a remap I I of. Uh, uh, Metal Gear Rising. <laughs> that was probably like one of the fastest games I've ever. Oh, Revengeance. Played. Metal Gear Rising. Oh, okay, okay. Remember the one me with uh, Raiden, and he wore like the heels with the knives on him. Oh, what? No, Super I, I never fast. Saw, I never, You've never saw seen Raiden. that. He's like, he's like a bionic, like ninja almost. Nice. Right. I thought that was Revengeance. No. I thought the, the, the Raiden story isn't Revengeance, or is he is that another Raiden story? There's like. Two or three Rising Two stories. Two or three Because oh, okay. the, the, Rise, the Rising so series and the Revengeance, like, that whole series is, like, not the tactical espionage. Like, oh, right, right. solid. No, it's, for sure. It's, hack, it's literally, like, hack and slash. Dude, it's... It's, it's platinum, baby. It's, it's platinum, crazy. Baby. It's platinum. And the next one is the last thing that we're going to talk about for Ubisoft, and I figured it was a pretty good transitional piece. Starlink's Battle for Atlas. Miyamoto came on stage. Miyamoto revealed himself. He revealed himself from the shadows. They gave him a. They gave him a toy. What toy? Who else revealed himself, Cartier? I don't have it written down, Dan. Fox and Cloud. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. <laughs> Yo, fuck you, Cartier. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant a real person. No, no, a Fox, fictional character. Fox, wait, wait, Trey, is Fox and Cloud a real person? He could be. Okay, good. That's all I needed. Just a little bit. D. Yeah. But pretty much uh, this game and everything, it yes, uh, you use like figures to you get it. Use it's use figures like a... use figures to play the game for the most part. I just want to let you know that Skylanders like you pulled up a game trailers thing. I love game trailers. It said edited by Ian Hink. I love Ian Hink. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Sorry. Uh, shout out to Ian Hink. Ian, <laughs> shout out to Ian Hink. Uh, yeah. No, it's. Very interesting. Um, you're not you're not playing Starlink's tray, right? I don't know, man. Toys of Life? Oh, some fucking sweet shit. I'd buy it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the game looks sweet, but that's... It's gonna, that's that boy's gonna be expensive. You know what I mean? Probably if it's too expensive, then no. Hard no. You're over... Mm, I don't want to throw shade. You're over $100 playing Starlink's. Starlink. If you're, I mean, you're over a hundred dollars playing a lot of games these days. DLC, right? Optional DLC. Yeah, but I mean, enough people dump into that that it funds sequels and stuff. Sixty, and that's fine. I, I'm like more fine with that. Like, I'm not against the Toys to Life thing. It's just like you know that you're a hundred dollars in without Star Fox. Like, if you want the Star Fox, it's like a total. Maybe there's like probably a bundle with Fox McCloud's I ship mean, in it though. Is it gonna be just like? A really basic level of swapping parts on ships, or is it like how oh, in depth is the the question? No, I think it'll be. I think it'll be in depth, man. I don't think it's. I would. From what I've seen, it doesn't look basic. What do you think, Cartier? Um, I think it, I think it looks pretty good. Like I think that I think it's wild to see like Star Fox coming on to a different console. And yeah. I did I did want to ask this, Trey. If you're gonna get this game, what console are you gonna get it for? Uh, um, PlayStation. Nice. Nice. 
<laughs> Gillette. It's the best. It's the best. But no, Starlinks. It uh, it looks it looks a little wild. It it looks like it's taking the toys to life, but just like in like a different direction. Like not really Amiibo, not Skylanders, but more of model building. Yeah, more of Lego. Except Lego didn't do this. They've done stuff like that, like Toys of Life. Lego Toys. All right, um, Dimensions, right? Mm-hmm. Nice. But where's my Lego spaceship? I can, that probably might exist too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that you can fly. But no, Trey. I think it's like fucking right thrusters out. Like they fucking hit you in the in the back right corner, and you're like, "Fuck, take that piece out, replace it," or just like have to like change where like, uh, like all energy to the fucking back shit. You fucking take everything off that is weapons, and you make everything to speed, and you're like doing that on the fly. I don't think you. Have to do it like that, but it sounds like there's gonna be options like that. I mean, it sounds crazy. It it but... seems pretty in depth for I mean, the actual yeah. system of clicking things into other things. It's badass, yeah. Why not? And I don't see any other Star Fox game at fucking E3. No. Right. Right, Cartier. Right. Didn't see a single one. But Racing things we did see from Nintendo. We're done with Ubisoft. We're talking about Nintendo now. Ooh. So, I'm bringing back Rapid Fire. Oh. Because I'm going to blow through the Rapid next, fire. like, four or five of them. Kyle, don't do the first one. You're going to like the first one, I think. Maybe. Octopath Travelers 2 demo is not out. Exactly. It's, a, it's a prologue. It's pretty much, Dan, what'd you say? It was like three hours of gameplay now? I've heard it. Yeah, it's like three hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's the prologue to Octopath Travelers... It's already in the eShop. If you want to play it, you can totally play it. Dragon Ball Fighter Z is coming to Nintendo Switch. That's cool. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is getting some DLC. A hefty amount of DLC. Man, yeah, they cut to that hard like it was something new. And just like, no, Xenoblade yeah. DLC. It's time. Fortnite is now on the Switch. Fortnite sucks. There goes the neighborhood card here. <laughs> no, that's fine. And then they're... Wait, no, I gotta say, it's funny that everyone's like, now the Fortnite kids are gonna come over, but then PS4's like, no, they will not. <laughs> <laughs> they can't... All, a bunch of people are like, well, I'm not gonna lose all my shit from PS4 if it doesn't transfer. Yeah. Okay, it's rap as well. And... Uh, thank you. <laughs> and the next one is a couple of indies that are coming to Nintendo Switch. Overcooked 2. Rap Hol- Hollow Knight. Don't. Okay. <laughs> I already did. No, you didn't do it for Hollow Knight. Go play Hollow Knight. That's like what I want to do. Like Spectre Knight, Shovel Knight, all these things are yeah. worth the money. Where Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, Knight looks like it's going to be good. And a game called uh, Killer Queen. They're coming to the Switch. Might already be on the Switch at this point. I think Hollow Knight might have just came out in like the last week on the cool. shop. Cool. That was but... new DLC too, wasn't it? As a new thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. So, the one game that we're actually going to spend a little, like, a second to talk about is Damon Machina. Machina, maybe. Machina. Machina. Pretty much, it's, uh, it's on Nintendo Switch. It starts off, this started off the Nintendo, like, little conference thing. And starts off with just, like, metal music. Mm -hmm. It's just metal music. And there are these metal robots. And they're fighting and they're blasting. I think... Blasting. It looks interesting. It looks interesting for a game that's on the Switch. Trey, it was the beginning of the Nintendo Direct and they cut to fucking mechs fighting with gutturals and lots of chugging. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I was excited. That's like... It's hard for Nintendo... Probably enjoy that more than anything. Trey, you think you think you're metal enough to play this game? Oh, definitely. That was the second most metal moment of the Nintendo press conference. I mean, what's not metal about Max? <laughs> the person inside. Son of a bitch, Trey. Wow. The girl. person inside. Pacific Rim. <laughs> so they uh, <laughs> they announced a new Super Mario Party is coming for the Switch. And a while back, a while back, we saw the patents for this. All right, so we saw the patents for like this, and I think I think we talked about it a little bit, but we didn't know what was going on. 
pretty much you are going to be using your Nintendo Switch like tablet as like the game board, mm-hmm. and you can put multiple ta- like multiple Nintendo Switches and make like a game board out of it. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. For Mario, for Mario Party, but like if, on the table. Yeah, but if you only have one, su- fucking cool. If you only have one Switch, the good news is Mario Party's fucking coming out of nowhere. So good. Mm-hmm. The new trailer showed off some. Um, Swept under the rug a little. Yeah, they showed some crazy like new multiplayer configurations, like laying two switches on the table, and pretty much like having an object move from one of the switches to another one, or setting up back to back systems for like interactive like mini games. Some of the mini games that they showed were the home run tournament. That looks good. Is that from the last one? I'm pretty sure it isn't yes. in one of them. So there's no there's no game board in the last one, right? No. Did, you, did you play that Mario Party, the Wii U one? Oh no! I I heard it was crap. Yeah, I heard there was straight no game board, or you all rolled as one. Something bad. Who cares? But yeah, that home run one. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if that's new or not. But they showed a tank game. Sense. They showed a motion controlled power racing game. <sighs> I'm afraid of those things. I'm sorry. It's tipsy turny. Anybody? I wasn't. I wasn't sure what they were gonna do Slot with that. Power, really. I wasn't sure what they were gonna do with that patent for like how the switches could like interact with each other. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure how they were gonna incorporate that into anything. But then like seeing them like I'm gonna put this pet. I'm gonna put this tablet down. And then there's another one, and it's just like Mario Party, and they're just like walking from tablet to tablet. Did not see that coming. It, it, super interesting. Did not see that coming. It seems like. Uh... Like, to me, right now, I'm just kind of like, oh, that's cute. But, like, probably that affects late game. Once you've played, like, your 300th game of fucking Mario Party. Yeah. It's gonna matter. Right. That's sweet. I was worried that there wasn't a Mario Party coming for Switch because they just hit the Mario Party Top 100 games, which sounded like a brilliant idea for the Switch, and they're like, 3DS. So, good to see a Mario Party actually coming. Yeah. Hell yeah. I got Mario Party in the bathroom real quick. Okay. You're gonna miss out on only Mario Party. fat Luigi. <laughs> Waha! 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 Anyways, so, next, they um they spent a hefty amount of time talking about, they didn't spend a hefty amount of time talking about, they spent a little bit of time talking about Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. And pretty much what they did is they gave us more info on the Pokemon Plus. Who did? Pokeball Plus. Who did? Reggie Fizzo Man. Reggie Fizzo Man. Reggie Fizzo Man. Reggie came out, and he was there. Go ahead, Curtis. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was there. I saw him. So they said that the Pokeball Plus is going to, when you buy it, it's going to come with a Pokemon already inside of it. You're going to get Mew. And you're going to be able to use Mew inside of your Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu game. They sold Pokeball Pluses with that move, Kyle. Reggie pulls oh. that little ball out of his massive pocket because he's eight feet tall. He, like, shakes it. And he's, like, and he's like, ooh. Sounds like there's already a Pokemon in there. Like, he doesn't know. And they do the the, the cry of Mew. Does it vibrate? I it, does, it does vibrate. Better believe that thing does vibrates. Of all the things it does, it's vibrating. It's interacting with you. But Mew scream. They're like, "Hey, Mew! It's just you. Just can start with him if you buy Pokeball Plus." I'm like, "Touche." There's a reason it wasn't fucking uh, Nidoran. No offense, Nidoran. Yeah. <laughs> people like, want Mew. People want Mew. They want to start with Mew. Cartier, is there going to be a shitty level restriction? Am I going to be able to play as Mew in my opening party? Um, I hope it doesn't start off at level 50 like most so, legendaries and mythicals. I think everybody's going to have a Mew. Yeah, no, they so have a lot of people have like a Mew. walking around. Just having a Mew. It's Everybody like two years ago they gave it out, and they, they've they been having more events for Mews. Like, I remember when I was first playing Pokemon, it took me a really long time to find an event for a Mew. Like, a really long time. I'm, ta- I'm talking, yeah, no, eventually I did. Eventually, Toys R Us, rest its whole, they had a Mew event. Dude, all Toys R Us's are closed. Not yes. the ones in Canada. They're still okay, in Canada. Okay, cool. But uh, all uh, of them in America, no, they're gone. So, well, where are toys? <laughs> right. <laughs> on Amazon. Kmart. No, Kmart sells. <laughs> Farmer, Farmer, Farmer Jam. Radio. Arbor Drugstore. Murray's. Where are toys? <laughs> Walmart. Damn. Amazon. Toys, toys, and toys in your local mall. Wa-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Come down to Toys, Toys, Toys. Yeah, I don't know. Man. So, don't know where they are. Yeah. There but was Toys R Us exclusives. Not anymore. Dude, no, yeah, but that's so interesting. 
like even affecting the video game industry. There was Disney Infinity Toys R Us exclusives. Yeah. And like Toys R Us, like lo- Toys R Us got it first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Star like is Starlink affected? <laughs> I worked at Toys R Us. People line up at the doors every day. Yeah, they did Christmas. for a second. Weird. I forgot. Good times. <sighs> But pretty much what they did is um, at the treehouse they had some like playable footage. They pre- they pretty much like talked about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and they talked about it with Junche Masuda and um, his translator. And in the background, the chick who was interviewing him was also playing. They pretty much showed gameplay from when you get to Viridian Forest all the way until when you talk to Brock to fight him inside nice. of the Pew City Gym. So like a decent chunk of chunk of like the early game. How the force look? It looks really really good. So the Pokemon in the Overworld, you can catch the starter Pokemon. So like they show like there's a Metapod and then there's like a Bulbasaur just walking around the forest. Yeah. So good. you can catch a Bulbasaur in Viridian Forest. Good good place for him to be right? on that map though. Oh yeah. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. it is unclear if it is going to be a yellow remake. They haven't like I've. I've been looking up into it. They had what? it straight. They said it's inspired. They didn't say it's technically a remake because they show the. So they show the um, not the antagonist, but like your rival, uh-huh. and he does not look like blue at all. So like the leaks were is like this could be like ten years in the future. Blah blah blah. Like still could hold up. Oh okay, interesting. Still, still could hold up. I gotta believe that you play. In- in Pokemon Yellow, it's not even... The name isn't Yellow, it's Ash, isn't it? Uh, Yellow or Ash. Oh, Ash is one of the except. Okay. There's like the uh, three name choices. They're like, Yellow, Ash, John. You play... Yeah. I see... You, John will be... John's in this game, for sure. <laughs> I, I hope it's not a remake. I, but now that you say that, I gotta go back to the idea that... Yeah, it makes more sense to um, utilize a pre-existing character that like people will be connected to. Well, that's the to. thing, though. It's not like this character like doesn't look anything like Red. That's the thing. No, or, like, I mean, the Yellow... That, Yellow be in the game somewhere. You be someone new, but utilize the fact that, like... Are they going to make their own yellow character, or are they going to go for, like, the... Like, the manga? Because in the manga, they had, uh... Back when it was only, like, you could only be red. Uh They had a girl character in there whose name was Blue, technically, but green in America. Okay. Because their names got full Was there a yellow? There was a yellow. That's what I wanted to be. That representation. It does not look like yellow at all. Yellow is like a little girl who lives in the Viridian Forest. Damn. Is her name? Hmm? Why? Why is Red's name Red? Why? Because why is Blue's name Blue? John was taken. Why is Gold name Gold? Why? Why is Enzio name Enzio? (laughs) That's not a color. (laughs) All tire. (laughs) All tire. A tire. But pretty much, um, they showed a lot of like the two player. Like what the two player like aspects are gonna look, and it looks fucking crisp, man. Mm-hmm. They also showed how you're gonna be EV training Pokemon in this game. So EVs and IVs are in this game. Horrible. Nice. But they uh, yeah, no, they said that like the EVs are gonna be in there. Pretty much, you're gonna be catching Pokemon instead of doing wild encounters. And when you catch them, you're gonna send those Pokemon that you don't want to the professor. It's gonna give you candy, like in Pokemon Go. Then when it gives you candy, it's going to be based on, like, what EV that Pokemon would have given you. So, like, originally in Pokemon, when you attack a Sparrow and you win and you beat it, you get one EV point towards speed. Now you get a candy towards speed. And then instead of... Yeah, exactly. And instead of, um... Instead of, like, Pokemon will get EVs when they battle, but you're also going to be getting this candy, so you can pretty much, like, stockpile 252 speed candies and throw those onto a Pokemon, max out its speed. That's cool. That's crazy. So they, like, more yeah, they, they, they dumbed it, they, yeah, it's way more convenient. Mm-hmm. They dumbed it down, like, to the extreme point. Yeah, they're almost just, like, it, there's never a moment in a Pokemon game I recall where they're, like, EVs. Mm-hmm. Not... Well, is there a time when they're like, "This is what EVs are"? Learn about them. Like Sun, Sun and Moon, and X and Y, they kind of like delve deep in there. But like, dude, even in like, you know the you know the books that come not the books that come with the game, but like the the handbooks that they're like, get this for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Mm-hmm. Those games don't even tell you like those books, those guidebooks don't even tell you about them. They're just like, there are these hidden values that you can't see that exist right. and matter. This candy's almost like, by the way, if you didn't know. Yeah. EV training. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. It's just too much to... 
not everyone cares, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's making more casual people competitive. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the competitive people don't like it because it's different. Yeah. Change. But I feel like they're trying... Because they keep saying that this is like, this is the Pokemon game for everybody. Change is and hard. I, I just it. wish everybody liked it. Mm-hmm. It'll be fine. It'll do... It'll do well. It'll do... It'll do pig. That'll do pig. So... After Pokemon, they uh, they talked about they they spent the most time talking about this game, this game that stole the show for Nintendo, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Bam. There's gonna be new characters. There's gonna be old characters. Oh. Every single old character that was playable inside of all the Super Smash Bros. games. Yeah, but not Snake. Oh, Snake is on it. Wait. But not Cloud. Oh, Cloud is in it. Wait. Cloud in both of his Final Fantasy VII outfits. <laughs> Wait, so not Ice Climbers. Ice Climbers are totally in it. Wait, but not like... Like, the Inklings from... Just the... They're one of the new characters. <sighs> so not Donkey Kong. ODK's in it, baby. But, so pretty not much... Not Mega Man, not Sonic, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, what they said is, um... For the new characters, Daisy... Daisy's gonna be a, um... I'm not, I forgot what the terminology they used for it, but she's pretty much, like, got the same moveset as, um, Peach. It, I think they're, like, shadow characters, or yeah. so, something something like that. I forgot to call it. Like, like how Ganondorf, like, fights, like, Captain Falcon, Ganondorf. you know? Ganondorf. Falcon punt. Waluigi. Not in it. He Crazy did. that he was never in a Smash Bros. Well, alright, so he is in it, he's in the Sus Trophy. Right. Still crazy. They said, um, like you said, the Inklings, they are going to be in this game. It looks like the boy and the girl are going to be different, like, outfits or skins for them. So it's not like they're, like, the Inkling boy and Inkling girl are separate characters. They said that... We fit trainer, we... Well, yeah, they're going to have all that. But for the Inkling, they, um... When you spray someone with ink, they take more damage. That's cool. And your ink is an infinite, so they said, like... You have to, like, hold B and block to recharge your ink. And then finally, Trey. Who's finally playable? Uh, Ridley. This was the most metal moment. Can I describe it? Yes. Metal Please. Night. It just, like, it cuts to darkness. Master. And it shows... It shows the feet of... Three of the most recognizable video game feet. It shows the shoes <laughs> of three of the most recognizable characters... In fucking games, and that is, it, it's uh, Samus's feet. Uh, at, is, we call it? is that X? I think it was Mega Man. Mega Man's feet and Mario's feet. It's like something's clearly in this dark situation. This, this looks like a spaceship. It's dimly lit yeah. fucking hallway. They're walking down this long metal path, and it's just like Mega Man disappears, they get stabbed. It's like shows him in the shadow being stabbed through the fucking heart, the fuck? and then like yeah, so brutal. And then like Mario, did they show Mario getting stabbed too in yeah. the shadow? Yeah, yeah, Mario gets stabbed, and his fucking Samus takes a breath, exhales, she sighs, looks looks backwards. She lets you know exactly that she knows who this is, and what kind of relationship she has with this thing, and she turns around, and it's my fucking Ridley. Well, she turns around. Oh. Mario's hat. Oh, it's Mario's just, hat. Yeah, yeah, Mario's yeah, yeah. hat is just laying on the ground. Mm. Just no Mario, nothing. Just all alone. And then, then, then Ridley. And then really bad Super Smash graphics. I didn't like that. <laughs> and then Ridley spinning the hat. Because <laughs> Nintendo's like, okay. Let's go take a breath. We're still having a good time. But no, that was sad. They went from the dark thing to the, the hat spin. Do you think that Ridley... You know Metroid better than me. Is it in Ridley's character to comedically spin Mario's hat on the finger? Um, I don't know that far into it, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Right. I just know the big dragon. No, I think he's just hype. Pretty fucking dark and serious when yeah. it came out. <laughs> I think he's just hype because like he was in melee as like someone that you could battle, mm-hmm. but like I was playable. It's nuts. I didn't think they were gonna do it. You see Zero Suit Samus coming in, mm-hmm. right? And, like, what's cool is not only is it uh, Samus, Mega Man, and Mario, all of which get destroyed by Ridley, and that's how you're announcing it. Not only was this final Smash, like, 
sweet. I don't know what a lot of them look like, but if they all look that sweet, I'm like, man. Uh, but they showed Sonic getting killed by Ridley. They showed, like, uh, Link getting killed by Ridley. Like, the most iconic people in video games that Nintendo would throw at you. They, uh, they, they showed, dude, they showed a lot about, like, Super Smash Bros. Like, they spent a minute talking about it. When I say they deep showed, dive. Dude, they, uh, it's so they dive. showed, like, different expressions that, like, all the different characters, like, when they get hit, Donkey, like, when Donkey Kong gets punched in the chest, his eyes pop out, like they do sometimes. They like, they do when he stands really close to a ledge, and he's like, whoa, you know? I love it. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, like, they're adding those in there, they're adding, um, battle damage, like... I think um, in Link Shield, there's gonna be like cracks start to show and shit. They gave a lot of little gameplay. Anything they changed gameplay wise, it felt like they went over it. Dude, they uh, so it's they went over. Place. I didn't write like I didn't write it down because they went over so much. But like they went through like a bunch of different characters and showed like who's getting buffed, who's getting nerfed. You know, showing yeah. like what these characters are about. It's cool. They showed uh, they showed that Cappy from Mario. He's not gonna be like a playable feature, but like when Mario does some, like when he, I think it's when he double jumps or whatever, you can see Cappy's eyes on his hat. Yeah. And they also said that the Mario Builder skin and the Wedding Mario is also gonna be two like outfits that you can have Mario wear. Yeah, the Builder. Mm-hmm. Sweet. <laughs> Mario Maker's coming. It's gotta be. Oh yeah. But no, nah, they showed they showed so much. I'd say if you're gonna watch anything for Nintendo, watch the Super Smash because they went through a shit ton. Unless you don't care about Smash, and that's a point I want to bring up, Cartier. I love a good deep dive, and you can say this about anything that any company spends time on. I love it. Smash com- the Smash community is big, and they care, and they're gonna give you them the money, and it's all gonna happen. It's a very good community, a very big, loving community as far as they love the actual games, but. Yeah, man. If it was 48 minutes, or 42 minutes, like 16 minutes on Smash Bros., mm. uh, I'm not against it. I, I loved it. Like, it was yeah. what you wanted Deep Dive to be, what they wanted it to be. Be like, hey, Pichu's back. This is the difference in movement. Like, oh, like so many little details. Very good. Ridley reveal. They added, uh, what is it, Proto Man and Bass into uh, Mega Man's Ultimate. Oh yeah, I, I, I well, didn't know. They have know. like the blast of all the Mega Mans, and they're all like using their little. I don't know what it was like before. Yeah, that's it was I'm... pretty much that, but without Proto Man and Base. That's sweet. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. But no, they spent a shit time. Like they they spent a shit ton of time on it. Like I feel I feel like this is like this is gonna be the game for Nintendo for this year. It, yeah, it's it's gotta be. When does Octopath come out? Octopath, I don't think it has a date yet. Does it? Might not. Fall. Possibly October. Yeah, don't worry about it. Interesting. Yeah. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. I got a mech game in 2019. So. Gaming. Pretty much, pretty much that's it for, that's it for Nintendo. (sighs) That's it for Ubisoft. Overall thoughts on the conference, Cartier, from you specifically. I think you care about Nintendo more than anyone in this room. Genuinely. Oh, that's true. I think it is. Like, I'm not saying we don't all no, enjoy I, it. I think, I think it could Love be it. argued. Was it? I think it could be argued. Yeah. Trey, <laughs> Trey also has a Switch. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah, Trey has a Switch. Yes. We all love it. I love that. I love fuck on Nintendo, too. I just, uh, let's news-wise. All, let's all be on the same team, guys. <laughs> so, no. I wanted to... I wanted to end today with a very, very familiar seg- segment. Nope. And yeah. it's called... The Twig. Oh, God. This Week in Gaming. This Week in Gaming is brought to you by Limit Media, Limit Media Incorporated, and Kyle Melville. Dan Allen, what do you think Kyle played This Week in Gaming? Well, before I tell you that, I can tell you that This Week in Gaming is brought to you by Limit Media... No. Uh, he played... <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. I know how you do it. Uh, Kyle played... Uh, Quantum Break. What the fuck is that? No, no, I'm sorry, I take it back. He played Hearthstone. Did he have a good what time? What the fuck is that? Okay, hold on, hold on, I got it. Uh, Outbreak. What's that? Games, I don't know. Dra- this- Dragon's Crown. What did he play? Kyle, what'd you play this week in gaming? Divinity Origi- by Limit Media. Divinity Original Sin. <laughs> the crew? <laughs> yeah, the crew too. The crew too beta. <laughs> I watched that yesterday. That <laughs> That's all I played this week, honestly. Really? 
Yeah, I didn't play a lot of things because right. it's just been hot. Kind of just want to sit in the coolest room in the house, which is my room, and just watch movies. Have we not been doing that lately? We have been doing that. Dude, uh, PlayStation should make this way. Like, they should make a thing where, like, you can play your PlayStation that's hooked up in your living room on your computer screen. Oh, yeah, I do. I mean, I do, <laughs> but, you know, it's just been so hot, I don't want to move my fingers, man. Uh, so, uh, I guess, <laughs> instead of, what did you play this week, what you what you been watching on, what you been watching on Netflix? Uh, I watched, uh... I watch on Netflix. Crack. <laughs> it's no, I've been writing movies on uh, iTunes. We watched The Kingsman yesterday. I the showed Golden Circle. <laughs> I showed Dan the scene. The yeah, con- the country the West scene. Virginia. Dude, <laughs> isn't that great? It is funny. I was like, "What are you showing me, Cartier?" <laughs> and he's like, "Almost him." <laughs> West Virginia. I was like, "Oh shit!" Relative to my interests. Yeah. Um. What else did we watch? We watched something else recently. I watched a shit ton of The Office. We watched Justice League for the most part. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Justice, Justice League. League. Not bad. People shit on it. Not bad. Dude. I had a feeling that's what it was going to be. I'm going to watch that shit. Today. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Did oh, there's going to be You've never seen it, Dre? Me neither. Nah, I bought Dude, it, though. Dude, it's not bad. Like, it's sure. literally not bad. Like... The only complaint I have about it is the fucking cover art. Looks like a fan made <laughs> yeah. fucking thing. Yeah. I mean, it just it do, it looks does. like an injustice game, like downloadable content screen. Damn. I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it, injustice looks better than that shit. Yeah. I just, I just but, remember, like, people, they're just like, oh, like, Ben Affleck's bad as Batman. I'm just, he's, a, he's a fine fucking Batman. He's a like, fine Batman. Fuck yeah. off, critic. People didn't like Clooney. You know who liked Clooney? I did. Damn it. I like Joey's. <laughs> yeah, dude, watch Justice Apple. League. It was actually fucking good. Awesome. It was a good yeah. movie. I did. I knew fucking people were just pissing about Bad that. Nipples. Yeah, it's, fuck them, dude. It's not it was a, a Marvel movie. movie. Like, Thanos doesn't dude, make honestly, an appearance. Like, what I was telling Nick yesterday, I was like, just because every line in this you, you don't laugh at does not mean that it's a bad movie. You yeah. know, Marvel movies are made for... And that shit's like not that, funny you know? the second time around when you Dude, watch those yeah. Marvel movies. Right. Yeah. You know, DC movies are That's... supposed to be dark. The theme yeah. of the whole movie is dark. The color theme of it is dark. So Aquaman's not wearing fucking bright orange and green. <laughs> you know, like, it's dark. DC's dark, man. Batman is, like, head of the DC universe. He's dark night. <laughs> it's just dark, man. Like, there, there's some funny shit in there. Like, Aquaman was pretty fucking funny. Trey hasn't seen it yet, so we're not going to talk about I'm it. I'm not going to say uh, anything. I'm just saying, Aquaman was pretty fucking funny. Kyle, you know what you almost played? Huh. Kyle came to my house today. He was supposed to be there for, like, a minute. Oh, I yeah. would have been fine with him staying, but he, under his schedule, he was stopping by for one minute. <laughs> so, he comes in. I'm like, all right, man, one second. I walk away, and I walk back. He's just, like, making a beeline for the back half of my apartment. <laughs> Which is, when he was last there, where Skate 3 was. <laughs> and I'm like, you playing Skate 3? He's like, no, I'm just, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> As he walks back towards the door. I was like, no. And I was like, it's just calling me, man. If I had it's been like a little a... later, if I had taken a little longer. <laughs> I might have just sat down during the dawn. Where I stand in the, by the door, because we're literally supposed to be just like stopping by. I yeah. just go like, and sit down and make myself comfortable. Like, I need, I need to get my, tra- my tray flipped down. <laughs> So fun. Speaking of Trey, what did you play this week in gaming? Trey Flip. Uh, Alright, I played Skyrim. Trey Flip's dead. Didn't okay. discover anything new. Are you loving it still, though? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Didn't cool. discover anything new. That's yeah, such a. No. I love that. Dude, I'm kind of sad. It's You've a discovered it all. Skyrim, yeah. I knew you would be. No, the only reason being is that underground cave with all the mushrooms. Mm-hmm. I just want to like be in that cave in the VR. I haven't seen it yet. Did you already sell it? Yeah. Skyrim VR? Oh, man. That was the only reason. If I just want to spend ten minutes in that thing, I would have sold it after that anyway, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> I just want to be in there. That'd be so cool. Yeah. I just want to be with a mushroom. <laughs> so uh, how how far do you think you are in it? I'm level 26. I haven't even, like... I'm getting to the, like, Ustengrad quest where I, would like, just... Uh, met with the old... Old bitches on top of the mountain that, like, showed me where to get dragon shouts. The, the, the gray beats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I've just been, I've been being a dick, stealing shit, trying to be a thief. Cheese wheels? Did you start a cheese wheel house? I haven't started a cheese wheel house, but I've been collecting cheese wheels 
for <laughs> just, just in case. Start a cheese wheel house. I got a mod cheese so home. there's like there's like a shitload of giants in each giant's den. Dude, so like that's that's a sick mod. Yeah, they yeah. they like squat up and and like better combat AI. So like if you're like shooting them with a bow in a spot that you can't they can't get to you, they like they like get out of your range and all hang out until you fucking quit camping. What is the mod where you play as a giant? That's gotta I exist. I mean, there's a um, there's a different start mod, and I think you can start as like a giant or something. I'll pick a different race. Yeah, it's, Sweet. it's something like that. So you're you're trying to be a thief and be all sneaky and stuff, right? Yeah, but part of me really wants to just like do magic and being heavy weapons, but I can't. I can't do it all. So there's um there's this exploit in Skyrim where I forgot what his name is, but there's the blind guy who's standing by the book that has no like nothing written in the pages. He's like when you he, you're doing like this like quest or whatever, and you walk in and he's like sitting there and he's like, "Is that you?" You can sit there and if you sneak back and forth because he's blind and he doesn't see you, you just like rack up your sneak points like that. No, that's fuck yeah. I just forget. I knew there was something in the beginning where you can like mm-hmm. abuse it. First dungeon, yeah, I did that. Like I've got like fucking sixty, seventy sneak. Yeah. Abuse the shit out of that. Yeah. Ugly wounds. Dan Allen? Yes. What did you play this week in gaming? Brought to you by Kyle Melville? Yeah. Whoop. Played two things worth noting. What I'll talk about less is... I played... Life is Strange 2, the the demo. The first steps into the expanded universe Captain that came Spirit. out. Captain Spirit. Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. Check out our YouTube. You can watch the whole playthrough of that. Where I do, like... All except one thing in that demo, which uh, I'll explain to you. That's all I'll talk about, Captain Spirit, because it's not in the playthrough. There, like, sometimes in games like this, they're like, find the thing for the safe, you know, find the code for the safe, and you look through every piece of paper known to man, and you find the code. Uh, at one point, it's like unlock your dad's phone and play Mustard Party Two, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna make a quick cap of this because I looked up how to do it. A lot of people didn't figure it out, and I can tell you, don't nod to entertainment, I was never going to solve this puzzle. They gave me a cell phone. The numbers do not have letters on it. There's no set amount of digits. You can put up, uh, like, ten digits in there. Like, I thought I was looking for numbers, end up being a word. I was never going to put that together. I should have thought of words, but even if I thought of words, I was never going to type in H-A-W-T-D-A-W-G-M-A-N. Hot Dog Man, reference to the handsome Hot Dog Man, a comic in the bathroom. I was never going to type Hot Dog Man to that fucking how cell did, phone. How did that even, like... There's theories that the mom who's dead was an artist. Like, why would the dad have that as his unlock on his phone? Right. Hot Dog Man. Like, obviously, the kids in superheroes. The idea is maybe the wife who was dead, who was an artist, maybe she had something to do with Hot Dog Man. Maybe she was a big fan of Hot Dog Man. Who knows? But Captain Spirit was really good. Worth checking out. Uh, it's free. If you've never played any Life is Strange game, it's a good first yeah. little look. Um, m- more importantly, I played pretty much all of Red Dead Redemption this week. Uh, yes. like I'm, I'm out of Mexico. I'm in Blackwater now. I'm with the government fellas. I've seen the car. I feel like once you've seen the car, it's got to be almost over. Once mm-hmm. you've seen an automobile. like Except the beginning. Uh, the first half of this game... I was like, I love Rockstar games, like, since I played GTA 3 as a 13-year-old boy busting blood vessels in my eyes, I have seemed to really like Rockstar games of Grand Theft Auto, so when I'm playing the first half of Red Dead Redemption, I'm liking it, I'm enjoying it, nothing is making me want to play the second game, though, nothing, like, it's really fun, I really like it, I remember liking it. The second half of this game, people don't like John Marston as a main character, he doesn't give a lot of lore for a long time. And that's true to his character, because he's like, it's not fucking anyone's business. I was sent here to kill my former friends by the government, because they have my fucking family hostage. And you don't even get that full story till later. What you know about John Marston is, maybe you know he's got a, a wife and son, but what he's only said once in the game is that he's also got a dead daughter. A daughter who's in heaven, as he says it. And it's just like, little things like that, sometimes you only say them once, and because you can skip a lot of these things... A lot of this lore, you could easily miss. You know what I mean? So, when the prequel game is coming out, and 
they're finally getting into, like, yes, you've been getting dialogue the whole time. Like, I'm in the wagon with this person. They're talking about the mission. They're talking about the state of Mexico. Yeah, you're getting that the whole time. It's very average for Rockstar, Grand Theft Auto things. And I like that. But when he runs into, like, the old timer, like, Gunslinger, that's killed everyone, was the fastest gun in the West. He's like, I heard you. So like, you Landon Ricketts? It's like, aren't you the fastest gun in the West? Back in the day, at least? He's like, well, I'm the only one left living, so apparently... When he asked him if he's landing rickets the first time, he's like, or he's like, what's your name? He's like, uh, he's like, uh, I'm no one important. He's like, well, what's your name? To John Marston. Every time in this game, when someone asks John Marston his name, he's fucking told him. But when Landon Ricketts mysteriously asked him, he's like, he's like, uh, I was born an orphan. I was born with no name. And I'm like, whoo, Fuck yeah, the fuckery. But the funny thing is, you find out later if you actually fucking pay attention. Yeah, John Marston is a fucking orphan. This is canon. He knows his dad. His mom was probably a whore. That's what yeah. they say. And then he was in the orphanage. Eventually in Dutch's gang. And, like, eventually he... They say Dutch later, but when he's talking to Landon Ricketts, because Ricketts was, like, a gunslinger for a long time and probably killed a lot of evil motherfuckers, he's like, I ran with a gang who you probably know the leader of. You've probably heard of him. And he doesn't say Dutch's name, and I'm like, I fucking love that, because what if that had triggered something Landon Ricketts? You know what I mean? He's like, oh, man, I, I hate you motherfuckers for this reason or that yeah. reason. As they... This is what's making me play Red... I played the whole first half not caring about Red Dead 2, Trey. I'll be honest with you. I didn't, I'm like, I probably won't. Not day one. But once they got into the fact that... You're playing this as this gang, and he doesn't tell you a lot of what happened, but the exact words are... They left me for dead. I think they betrayed him, but you're going to get like a betrayal scene. They left me for dead, uh, but it was probably for the best anyways, because they were all losing their minds. That's what we're going to play as in Red Dead 2. We're going to play as the 40-plus uh, bank robberies that the government mentions once that you guys did, uh, the murder of like 400 people, or yeah. whatever they mention, uh, Dutch... Dutch's gang going crazy. Bill Williamson and Dutch clashing. Uh, Javier Escuela, who I just fucking... Oh, no, I didn't I didn't kill Javier Escuela. I killed the fuck out of Bill Williamson. Best believe when the whole game you're after Bill Williamson and he's left you for dead fucking twice once in the game, mm -hmm. when they have him on the ground, they're like, do you want to shoot him in the fucking head? I'm like, yeah, I want to shoot him in the fucking head. This is over. The Bill Williamson arc is fucking over. Bill Williamson, you're dead. I'm really liking Red Dead Redemption. That's the whole thing, Cartier. Sorry, that's my rant. <sighs> What'd you play this week in gaming? Sorry. This, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, this, week, this week in gaming, I bought the... There's a... What is it? There's a pack on the Nintendo Switch where you can get all three of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storms. Ninja Storm, nice. So... Nice. When I had a 360, I played the first game. So I bought all three of the games in the pack. It was only like $40 or whatever. But I started on the second game because I already played the first game. And if I ever want to play it, I can play it again. But the second game starts off at like the beginning of Naruto's second half, technically. And I'd say I made my way all the way to the Kakuzu fight. And now like my pr perspective has changed. So now I'm playing as Sasuke. And that's currently where I am. Cool. It's, it's, a pretty, it's pretty all right. It's not bad. It, uh, it looks pretty good on the Nintendo Switch looks pretty good okay. it's uh it's a little blurry at times in handheld mode but i think that's just the way that they have like the backgrounds versus like you know how when they like fade out backgrounds and then like have the characters like not faded out mm -hmm. so like you're predominantly focus, like, focused yeah. on that it's a lot of that and i feel like that's why it looks blurry because it is blurry but no nah, because like i've been thinking about either reading the manga again or watching the series and i'd watch the series but there's fucking like 100 episodes so much fucking filler it's full of filler it's filled it's filled with filler. it's filled so i bought the game so i can play it and after i, I think i'm gonna beat the second game i think that's gonna be the first game i'm gonna beat for the switch but i'm gonna beat the second game play the third game the fourth game isn't on the switch hopefully they put that on the switch it's gotta be coming right maybe maybe good point Maybe. Are you a Bleach guy, Cartier? I watched a little bit of it, but... Only well, because I want to bring up that Mr. Pull My Devil Trigger himself, Nero, is voiced by the main guy from Bleach. Yeah. I didn't know that. But yeah, man, oh, the Naruto games, I've always heard good things about. I was just, like, never into Naruto. Yeah. 
But I always heard those games are really good, man. It's not bad. Hey, it's um, I'm, get, I'm getting a lot better at So they have um, a lot of quick time events, like, at the end of battles and, like, in the middle of battles. So, like, okay. pretty much it's, like, you're fighting on, like, you're fighting, you know, you're just, like, fighting these ninjas and everything. And you hit, like, the triggers to pop in your support and, like, it'll be, like, whoever you have as your support. There's also, like, it'll transition to where, like, all right, now you're doing quick time. It's, like, hit X, hit up, hit A, hit down, hit Y, hit... X, X, B, A, Y, you know, <laughs> that shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not good at that shit. I feel like I'm getting better, though. But I was sitting at Kyle's house the other day, and I spent probably, like, an hour just, like, fighting a boss that I had spent, like, three hours before that fighting because I <laughs> I couldn't get it down, so I played it enough to where I figured out his pattern, and then, like, I I knew how to do it. I was like, all right, for sure. Yeah. This, this is how you beat this guy. That was a learning experience. But that's what I played this weekend, gaming. On that Naruto grind. On that note. Oh, yeah, man. This on, is weekend gaming. On that note, we are Limit Media. This is Great Lakes Gaming. My name is Nicholas Cartier, and I'm with. I'm Dan Allen. Trey. Cow. And we are Great Lakes Gaming Podcast. If you like the way our voice sounds, you can find us on limitmedia.fireside.fm, or you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google, Stitcher. Google Play. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you can check out our YouTube. Just type in Limit Media on YouTube and you'll find us. Or Great Lakes Gaming. Or Great Lakes Gaming. Yeah, Great Lakes Gaming. Um, We have have Twitch up and running now, so you can go to twitch.tv slash Limit Media. If you have any fan mail, anything, make sure it's titled to Trey and send it to limitmedia at gmail.com. And Four today, three. we don't have a closer, but we do have some final words, so... Final words. Oh, final words. My final words are... How many do I get? Final sentence? Last sentence. Okay, my final sentence will definitely be... You're right, that's it, right there. Bang, bang, Two. bang, pull my devil trigger. <laughs> Trey Gretzen, what are you doing? Trey thought it was over when I said it. Oh. Do I do it? Final, wor- final words? No, final oh, words. Oh, shit. Bye. Final words? Bah. Final words for me? Next time we'll pay attention. <laughs> Next time.